in this case two different things to show you some parlor and one in Yala with an identity crisis. So for our newer viewers who are joining us for the first time, the magnificent antelope with the thick shaggy dark fur and the spiraling horns is a cousin of the kudu that we saw earlier and is a male Nyala. N-Y-A-L-A. -A, Nyala. And the reason I say he has an identity crisis is because he's found himself in believe it or not, even though we can't see one of them right now. <laughs> They've all vanished. Oh, there we go. Here's two of them. He found himself in a herd of impala, which just goes to show any bolt hole in a storm is acceptable. And the natural herding instinct of these antelope, particularly on days like today, where as many eyes and ears on the lookout as possible is absolutely a good thing, he's decided to join up with this bachelor herd of very chilly Impala. Poor chaps. And it is really very cold. All of the animals sheltering as much as possible while they feed for the afternoon. Now, when I first approached here, I was hoping that the Nyala might be putting on a bit of a display in terms of his bl sort of doing the very, very. Sorry, guys. I just heard a distracting update on the Game Drive channel. But yes, they do a little bit of a dance, a mating display, in terms of intimidating their rivals. But Wayne would like to know, on that subject, are there any antelope on, in this area that communicate through stamping their hooves in this way similar to the white-tailed white deer of North America? And my apologies, Wayne. None of those sentences came out all the way I intended to. Occasionally, the embattled Inyala or Kudu might stamp their feet once or twice, but no, there's not a major emphasis on foot stamping as far as I know in terms of communication. Um, they might stamp their feet as a method of intimidation, but I have never experienced or watched any of our antelope species communicating with each other through foot stamping. Some of them do have glands in between their feet, which I suppose in a way is a form of communication since they have scent glands in between the halves of the hooves and they will use that to either mark territory or just scent mark in general. So that's one way that they use their feet and they might scrape their hooves a little bit, particularly wildebeest. Blue wildebeest do that very regularly. So I suppose you could call that communicating, but I know that that's not really what you meant. There was also some kudu around here, but they've completely disappeared. So for now, we can have a look at our impala that are clearly absolutely freezing. So an impala in summertime or on a nice warm winter's day is a sleek brownish color, not to this deep red that our impala have taken on at the moment. They've fluffed up their fur. And they are attempting to warm themselves in any way. It's like us getting goosebumps. And you can see what we mean about the antelope species not really wanting to be, or any of the general game species, not really wanting to be anywhere near the open areas, which includes roads in this case. And that's just them sheltering from the wind. Oh, we've got another member of the antelope family about to wander across towards this herd. And that is a male waterbuck, big waterbuck bull disappearing in between the trees with his white ring on his rump just visible ducking his head and dodging with his horns a magnificent antelope much much larger than the impala that we've been looking at before and in fact much larger than our Nyala bull as well in terms of just sheer bulk and this is a particularly big waterbuck bull like the impala, the unyala, the kudu, and the waterbuck. All of these are antelope species where only the males have horns. 